Why is the mouth moving? Why is it moving? I'm not talking and it's still moving. Starting off the news this week, a paper published in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Letters has analysed the history of solar cycles to try to predict the future, concluding that this current solar cycle, Solar Cycle 25, is expected to reach its peak in 2024. The study builds on a plethora of previous studies on the subject of the rising and falling activity of our Sun since its existence, immediately noting the link between the solar magnetic cycle and the presence of sunspots. Solar Cycle 1 was the first recording of sunspot activity and happens between 1755 and 1766. We are currently in Solar Cycle 25, Solar Cycle 24 ending in 2019. The researchers on this paper say that our current cycle is expected to be a weak to moderate cycle and that it is likely to peak from July this year to September 2024, with the most likely time being January 2024. This lines up with another study done in 2018, which used a different model to make this prediction. The study published this week takes a new look at the relationship between sunspots and the sun's magnetic activity, and reaches the same conclusion as the study from five years ago. This is of course extremely promising for both teams and the conclusions they reached, and dramatically increases the likelihood of this being an accurate conclusion. A fascinating study that takes a much needed look at our sun, where the processes are still very much surrounded in mystery. Also in the news, there has been an exciting development for actively removing micro and nanoplastic pollution from our water bodies in the form of biohybrid microbots. Micro and nanoplastics are the project of larger plastics degrading in the environment, particularly in water bodies such as our oceans and rivers. These minute particles have been found to disrupt aquatic ecosystems in many ways, from delaying the growth of organisms, reducing their food intake, and damaging fish habitats. The biohybrid microbots consist of a combination of algae and environmentally friendly magnetic nanoparticles, and have been given the name Magnetic Algae Robots, or MARs. The robots operate under the influence of an external magnetic field, enabling precise control over their movement. The way they work is simply amazing. The MARs have a negative surface charge due to the presence of dash COOH groups on the surface of algae cells, while micro slash nanoplastics carry a positive surface charge. This positive negative interaction facilitates electrostatic attraction. During tests in water tanks, the MRAs could be controlled with high levels of precision and demonstrated remarkable removal efficiency with 92% for nanoplastics and 70% for microplastics. To fully understand the environmental implications of their use in the real world, further research needs to be completed such as investigating the biocompatibility of MARs with aquatic ecosystems and assessing potential impacts on non-target organisms. It is a technology that looks promising to help clean up the plastic soup that many of our watery ecosystems contain. First up in the paleontology news for this week, there's been the description and naming of a new dinosaur species from Brazil that's only known from fossilised footprints. These footprints were found in rocks belonging to the early Cretaceous-aged Botucatu Formation, which is actually one of the richest formations for prehistoric trackways of this age anywhere in South America. Other trackways of different kind of animals have been identified here, most notably many tracks of early mammals, but this is the first time a dinosaur has been named from here. It's been named as a new ichno species, meaning it's a species name for a trace fossil, and is called Phalloichnus rapidus. The creator of these tracks was most likely a small theropod, potentially related to the noosaurs, types of abelosaurs. The footprints reveal quite an unusual foot anatomy for these little dinosaurs, with a very large middle toe, digit 3, between the relatively reduced digits 2 and 4, which appears to have quite blade-like outlines. Digit 2 is also nearly twice the length of digit 4, showing that this was a fascinating and unique anatomy among theropod dinosaurs. The rocks that these prints were found in represent a vast, ancient desert. 
the largest known fossil desert in Earth's history in fact. And so it's possible that this unusual toe anatomy may be an adaptation to life in this harsh environment, potentially enabling this dinosaur to run quickly across the sandy dune surfaces. And finally from the news this week is a study that has re-examined some previous research that found evidence for a type of evolution called anagenesis occurring in tyrannosaurs. Anagenesis takes place when a species evolves from another species without a branching event happening. Basically, the entire population that makes up a species continues to interbreed with each other and gradually becomes a different species. This contrasts with cladogenesis, when populations of a species become isolated in some way and they diverge, with one or more populations branching off and eventually becoming a different species. Well, in November last year, paleontologists described a new species of the tyrannosaur Daspletosaurus, which they called Daspletosaurus wilsoni, and proposed that it represented an intermediate species between the older Daspletosaurus taurosus and the younger Daspletosaurus horneri, which would make this a case of anagenesis. This new research, however, has reanalyzed the fossil data and found that there's actually no anagenesis involved. Instead, cladogenetic evolution was occurring within tyrannosaurs, and they demonstrate that within the subfamily Tyrannosaurinae, there were four distinct groups that all split from one another. One of these four groups is named and defined for the first time in this study, Teratophoniani, which is so far only known to have lived in the southern regions of North America. Using data from a fourth, still unnamed species of Daspletosaurus, the researchers demonstrate that these tyrannosaurs actually did not evolve through anagenesis, and instead there were several cladogenetic splitting events that gave rise to the three known species plus the fourth unnamed one. Well, that's it from us for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.